Hello viewers, Lance Mechanics here today, and I just read a good article. What happens to mechanics when EVs dominate? So I got some opinions on that, and you're gonna laugh when I read the, the header title there in a second. Uh, I'm just gonna walk around, do this on the selfie stick, because I'm tired of sitting. So uh, let's get into it. Brought in the shop helper. Lola, what do you think about EVs? Huh, you think they're gonna take our jobs away? What do you think? Oh, you're such a good girl. Don't let mommy see you're in here. She's gonna say I have to clean your paws now. Okay, get out, come on, go, be free. Oh, switch screens. Oh, I'm gonna try this differently. Gonna throw the dog's toy while I'm here and uh, reading this, multitasking. So, <laughs> imagine a world where the roar of a gas engine is a distant memory. What happens to the thousands of skilled mechanics who keep our cars running today? Will the wrenches gather dust or will they adapt to a silent electric future? This video will dive into the unexpected transformation awaiting the automotive repair industry. Oh boy, um, what do I think about that? Um, I don't think we're gonna lose any mechanics, personally. Ooh, you're vicious. I think, if anything, uh, we're already set up for working on hybrids, electrics, uh, diesels, all that stuff, really. What I think is gonna happen is just gonna get way more expensive for the consumer. Oh, video. Sorry, my entire life's a distraction, right, little girl? Oh, you're such a good girl. Answer the wifey there. All right, let's get her off me. There we go. So, oh, what was this article saying? Uh, where are we? Uh, the automotive repair industry as we know it is on life support. It's not, it really isn't. And they suspect by 2035, electric vehicles are projected to make over 50% of new car sales. Okay, so, this is a numbers game here, I believe. Lola, let go. Where someone uses 50% of new car sales. Okay, that's great. Um, let's say you sell a million cars in 2035. 500 to 1,000 of those are, they fall under hybrid, electric, uh, diesel, electric, whatever. You still have over 100 million cars on the road that are still ICE engines. That's internal combustion engines. So they're making the numbers seem larger than they really are. And my theory is, we all know there's a push for electric. It's, they're doing that everywhere. Underground electric is huge because it's clean. You don't want diesel particulate flying around in our air there. So that's that's a big one. So yeah, everybody's going to electric. It's better for the air, but it's, it's really not gonna affect the automotive industry. I can already tell you right now uh, from what I've learned, no. Most mechanics are already starting to work on hybrids. They're working on electric vehicles. The aftermarket is caught up more than the dealership. And people don't realize is, I would say the aftermarket's ahead of the dealership when it comes to electric vehicles and hybrids because they're the ones repairing it and they're doing it to help the customer. So right now the trend with electric vehicles is everything is an expensive repair. I'm seeing mid 2000s, 2010 Hondas, for example, because I'm always looking for them where they need inverters or the battery is dying. And to me, I'm like, well, an inverter is $2,500. Um, I'll, I'll email them saying, well, what's wrong with it? Well, it was diagnosed at a shop as an inverter. I'm like, are you sure? Do they have proof? What was the troubleshooting? So I'll ask questions like that because I can fix it. An inverter is stupid or a DC to DC. That's very easy, repairable stuff. Or I've gone farther and I've pulled apart Tesla batteries, batteries and rebalanced a single cell or you just replace that sub pack if it's really out to whack. But there are companies who will rebalance them for you and you're just replacing one cell, which is cheaper than a $17,000 battery. Uh, you're gonna pay a little bit of labor, but these vehicles, Lola, uh, I think are better long-term. Um, you can have some expensive repairs, but you could also have expensive repairs on a gasoline or a diesel engine. So what's the issue? Uh, the maintenance is down a little cheaper. Oh, she's vicious. So if anything, it's better long-term. Uh, you're just gonna see more specialized shops doing repairs. Uh, let's get back to the mechanic side. Got it. So these articles are funny. They're saying uh, the new generation of technicians will have to be far more skilled and advanced and they'll have to have skills they've never had before. Um, we've, we've had them for 20 years, we've had them for 30 years. There's nothing new. I really don't think mechanics are going anywhere with all this naysay. 
Uh, it's just, it's, I, I looked at the person who wrote the article and I'm like, oh my God, they're just an IT person. They really have no clue what they're talking about. Like all this naysay is, is it blows my mind. Uh, mechanics were pretty intelligent. We're not going anywhere. If anything, um, the general public's gonna pay more at the end of the day. Like you move from maintenance to paying for bigger repairs. Uh, it is what it is, like I said, and I personally believe the private garages are way ahead of the dealerships and the OEMs. Uh, I was following Rich Rebuilds from day one. I loved it. Uh, you're seeing more and more YouTubers get into the electrified circuit or genre or whatever you want to call. And like I said, it, they're making it seem very, very easy. It is dangerous. Uh, DC is a very, very dangerous. She's unforgiving. Whereas AC, you, you may survive. DC is going to basically cook you. So I'm just waiting for one of these YouTubers to make a mistake because I don't feel like they respect it. Um, I deal, I don't really deal with it, but I do have the potential to interact with 800 volt DC where I am. And it's all about safety. And there's so much safety interlocks involved that it's, it's very difficult to hurt yourself, but there's always the potential. And I look at these people who are dealing with 48 volts. It's lower, but 48 volts is still extremely dangerous. They wouldn't have high voltage colored cables on it if it wasn't an issue. Where are you going, Lola? So if you're new to electric vehicles, uh, general public, even some of you automotive technicians, uh, there's something called an HVIL circuit. Uh, every electric vehicle uses it. It's called a high voltage interlock. When it senses an open or senses current to ground or the resistance jumps up, meaning disconnected, it immediately turns off the system. Um, a good example of this is in Jerry Rig Everything where he ripped his back bumper off. He also opened the circuit on the HVIL circuit and the, tech, uh, the Tesla technicians found it very quick. But this is a common circuit in all electric vehicles and possibly even a lot of hybrids these days. Oh, she's tough. And generally a lot of people don't know how to troubleshoot it. Some, some use a total resistance or some use current generators. Uh, so you can basically go to the center of the circuit and see what current it's putting out or you check the resistance in the case of Tesla every module has a 60 ohm resistor in line and you basically just have to start probing to see where the open is or the short uh, that's what Tesla uses for their uh, their HVIL circuit and it's pretty pretty good information you can find it online Tesla is one of the few OEMs will actually just release everything got it <laughs> So the information's there, you can teach yourself. I highly re recommend everybody learns Tesla because it's so simple at the end of the day. And there's such an aftermarket available for it because I'm even I've been looking at Tesla batteries because you can buy a BMS system and you can use it for solar panel. I want to put solar on the garage and see what I can do with it. Maybe I can weld with a whole entire solar pack here. It's DC at the end of the day. It's hot here, she's coming back. Anyways, so let's talk about certification. So here in Ontario, Canada, the average licensed mechanic can deal with 48 volts. Anything after that, you're, you're basically an industrial electrician. Uh, great for certification. Um, we have a lot of industrial electricians starting to do the electrical side of DC current. It's freaking wicked. But for the automotive guys, you gotta really respect it. And I remember when EVs started showing up at the dealership, everybody was paranoid. They had the, the fiberglass poles, the gloves, all this stuff. They were, you should still do this, using their bad hand to turn off the disconnects. All great safeties, number one. Um, they were over afraid. You still have to respect it, but they were to the point where they, were, they wouldn't even work on the 12 volt system and they were paranoid about all this other stuff. Respect it, respect it at the end of the day. Check your facts, check the procedures, but it's not any more difficult than anything else you've ever worked on. The voltage is higher, which requires uh, mindful, mindfulness and safety. And that's my recommendation. Just take your time with it. Uh, as it evolves, you're gonna realize, oh, you're so cute, that your safety is important. Just take your time and bill accordingly. That's where I think a lot of the, uh, so cute, a lot of the costs are gonna go up for people. Like, yes, you're not paying for maintenance, you're not, you're not doing engines, but engines is such a teeny little part of the the, uh, the ice engines in a car. Like, I'm not explaining it. It's really minor. Uh, people are only coming in for oil changes, belts, maybe spark plugs in a tune-up. 
let's say in the life of that vehicle, they spend three grand on maintenance for the spark plugs, oil changes, all the stuff it needs. It's really not much. Uh, let's let's uh, say your drive motor is like your engine. A drive motor is $1,200 to replace on a used Tesla a Model 3. You can buy them used now. Like uh, the prices aren't that bad. What's gonna kill you is the battery. Um, this could be controversial. I'm gonna talk about it. So for anybody who knows battery chemistry and all that fun stuff, oh, I almost got it. Uh, Tesla's superchargers, their quick chargers, on paper doesn't make sense. Um, so a battery is a unique thing. It'll charge very quickly to 80% and it'll do it quickly. And then that last 20% is where people get impatient. So it takes just as much, like, so let's say you're at 10, just random numbers here. You're at 10 amps to get it to 80%. Well, that took 10 minutes and 10 amps. So that last 20% might take two amps, but it still take 10 minutes. And then after that, uh, when a battery's at 100%, it goes into like a cell balancing health mode that a lot of people skip out on. So you don't have to do it often. They say like every two months, you gotta leave it on for an extra hour or two. That'll help balance the cells. It'll bring everything up to perfect. Uh, for, for me, it's like, well, how does a set Tesla supercharge do this? You have to force a lot of current and kilowatts into that damn battery to get it up to 80% and then get it to the last 20%. And the only way you'd be able to do that is by destroying the batteries for a quick gain. Lola. So I think any battery, I, personally, I think if you're buying a Tesla, make sure it was never supercharged because uh, it's definitely damaging the battery. Uh, people may fight me in the comments. It just doesn't make sense. Batteries are made of chemicals. Uh, there's a limit. And another thing is, uh, did I get it? Oh, almost. Another thing is where people are buying the, the, the high amperage chargers for their house where it's like 220 and got it. 220 volts and a certain current and you don't really need that um slow and steady is better leave it on charge overnight on your 120 uh, i personally think it's overkill you really don't need these super high amperage uh kilowatt chargers the average person will only use the 120 volt and it'll be better long term i know this video is kind of evolving but yeah so that's another cost people are paying electricians to to do install on their houses and I don't, I don't think it's necessary it's like when honda figured out that they don't need to make a real pickup truck because the average person only uses it once a year and it's true got it you really don't need to splurge on all this extra so keep that in mind and i know i'm talking about the superchargers but yeah back to the actual thing at heart here I really don't think it's gonna affect any mechanics. Uh, I think the private garage industry is already caught up way further than they need to be. Uh, I personally think uh, the OEMs don't like it because now the aftermarket is way ahead of the dealership. And let's be honest, at a dealership, they're not gonna open up a battery. Um, they're gonna replace it as complete units. That battery is gonna go to a place and get refurbished. Oh, almost got it. And you know what, those technicians are gonna fall behind compared to the individual who focuses mainly on uh, diesel electrics or hybrids or full full electric. Um, and there's another good good thing here, like uh, hybrids, everything's a hybrid. Electrics, uh, look at uh, DeBoss Garage there. They're, they're working with Edison Motors and they're making diesel electrics, which I think is probably better for the future. Oh, she didn't go for it. Come here, Lola, go, go, go get it. Yeah, she's up. She's tired. So I think it's better for the future. And I really don't think you're gonna see like much changes. Uh, I heard you made that video about the Ontario grid. It sucks. Uh, I don't, it won't handle it. <laughs> so, and I remember when I was in trade school, they said by 2025, they were gonna uh, forbid the sale of ice engine. All right, had something to eat there. Played with the dog for a bit. She's back inside. Uh, I don't know where I left off here. I'll just do a random edit, but uh, yeah, there's there's still gonna be mechanics. Uh, I know you see these things like Tesla's 300,000, 100,000, whatever. They're not doing brakes. You're still doing tires. You're still doing suspension. Um, I really don't think it's gonna really hurt the mechanic industry. If anything, you're gonna see more mechanics popping up if anything. 
even I'm considering it, doing it in my part time uh, when I have days off here. It, it's really nothing to get into a Tesla battery. I'm not paranoid of them or anything. I've done it in the past. Uh, I could specialize in just refurbishing batteries. It wouldn't be hard. Like I said, all this doom and gloom over mechanics disappearing and robots taking over the job. People are really out to lunch on this one. Um, that's my opinion. Again, people don't realize how heavy these hybrids and SU or like battery vehicles are. They're heavy. Like they're going to go through suspension a lot quicker than uh, your ICE engine. Like those Honda 1.5s, like the block itself only weighs 80 pounds. Um, a drive motor is pretty light. Um, transmission adds up. Like they're really comparable until you get to the battery, the power packs. Then these things get heavy. So again, suspension brakes, electrical problems, the electrical problems are still there. Uh, just because you have a battery power plant doesn't mean all your ADS, your mitigation, your interior features are all bulletproof. If anything, they're a lot more susceptible to electrical damage. And that's where people are finding out. So early on, uh, I don't think people realize that the, uh, the dash screen in a Tesla uh, they're using chaotic EEPROMs or something with memory, but when that screen failed, you lost the vehicle, you lost your SRS, everything, because they weren't doing what cell phone companies and auto manufacturers figured out is, uh, it was, it was, had a certain amount of life cycles left in it. So you turn the car on, you turn it off, and eventually this memory would fail. Whereas in your cell phones or in automotive, it's continuous. You can continuously reprogram this memory and Tesla kind of dropped the ball on that. Someone will correct me in the comments, but things like that. There's a lot of EV startups. There's a lot of a variety coming, especially over from China. I know people are kind of scared. Like, look at Rich Rebuilds. Uh, there's some good stuff there. So there's a lot more diversification coming out, and there's going to be a lot more options. We'll just have to see what makes it to the North American market. And like with anything, more options, you're going to have more mechanics, more opportunity. Like I said, uh, I'm seriously considering a... Someone wants to set me up here with uh, just send me Tesla batteries or power packs and all the equipment. I'd be really thrilled. I'm eventually going to buy it, but if you can speed that up, thank you, thank you. Uh, where, where are we in the video? Oh, yeah, by the way, 90% uh, of you aren't subscribed. Um, this channel is all about community, and there's a lot of valuable information in the comments. There's so many mechanics subscribed to my channel, and I actively encourage them to post and comment and same with the viewers if you're not mechanically inclined ask questions in the comments uh, my commenters or my subscribers are very very helpful that's huge with this channel that's where we're trying to build a community it's like we're at 17,000 now vast majority are mechanics we're all opinionated but we get along at the end of the day and that's what I like to foster so sorry for the shameless plug this far in the video so if there's any shop owners watching this video I'm gonna say don't be scared it's really not that bad. Uh, I think people are really overcomplicating something that's not an issue right now. We're, mechanics, we're not going anywhere. Um, we're already dealing with 48 volt systems, so why are you panicking? The battery is just a power source. Think of it, the fuel. Um, there's nothing complicated with it. Uh, once you start to learn the interlocks, the HVIL circuits, all the things that would brick this thing, like door charger doors, uh, how to disconnect them, we're, we're all about learning, so I, I don't know where this fear mongering has come from because when I look at these articles, it's really a lot of uneducated, uninformed people who are making these articles and they have no business making them. Uh, it's all speculation at the end of the day. And from my perspective, again, there's a shortage of mechanics, but we're really not going anywhere. I don't know how much I can explain that. Uh, I said, it's going to be, uh, I think, in the next five years, it's gonna be really good for automotive technicians, especially private garages, who are willing to take the leap to jump into the EVs. And some people may disagree, but that's just my perspective right now. I know the market's there. And I, I st I'll keep reiterating this, that uh, the private garage sector has really uh, jumped ahead of uh, the OEMs. Um, and it's gonna be interesting to see because there's a lot on the market, so. Yeah, uh, I think I'll add the video here. It's pretty long. It's getting hot in here. Um, it's all over the place. So yeah, have a good one.